you've ever been in the military and been on KP duty, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It was probably the worst experience of my life. Uh, like, comment, do all those good things. Uh, comment section, I notice if I say anything, they tend to get, you know, they tend to act out. It's like when I'm giving them attention. So we're just going to kind of leave it alone for a second there. Um, I was lifting weights and um, I guess strained too hard and I blew a vessel in my eye. So that's why it looks weird. I almost didn't make a video and just kind of uh, was going to wait till it healed. But I figured you guys wanted some information. So we're just going to push forward with this. Um, guys, if you are looking to support the channel, um, a big supporter of the channel right now is Gun Mag Warehouse. So like I've talked about before, they give me monetary support. Um, all they ask that you do is that you go to their website, you buy magazines. Uh, discount code Grantham. They're pretty cool. Um, if you are looking to get plaid shirts, we've got Vertex, discount code Grantham. Or if you need ammunition to train, LAX ammunition, discount code Grantham as well. Guys, all that stuff's past us. Let's talk about a really interesting upper receiver uh, group today. So that is from Geisley, and it is the URGI, which stands for Upper Receiver Group Improved. So this, this is the brand new rifle that has been adopted by the United States Army Special Operations Command. So that means that those units that fall under there will begin using this upper uh, in the near future. Okay, full disclosure. Um, the Geisley URGI was given to me by Geisley, right? So I didn't pay for this rifle or anything like that. So understand that um, I am pretty unbiased when it comes to stuff. I have no dog in the fight. I'm not paid by Geisley or anything like that. All the ammunition that I use on this was my own. I fired about 4,000 rounds on this, and then I have a couple of buddies who have around 20 to 30,000 rounds on their URGIs. So with our combined experience, we have hopefully a good review. So where does this rifle kind of fall? Well, if you're not familiar with cloners, uh, cloners are a group within the kind of AR-15 gun enthusiast world or just the gun enthusiast world, and they uh, aim to clone rifles um, or pistols to make them as clone correct to the service weapon as possible. Now, it's not always, you know, possible to get perfect, but you can usually get pretty close with civilian uh, analogs. So these people are doing it for a variety of reasons, whether that be because they want to clone the rifle that they had when they're in the service, or whether they want to LARP really hard or something like that. Point is, is that there's a lot of these people out there. And their level of detail, uh, attention to detail and determination in autism is rarely seen outside of circles such as Warhammer 40k. So they're, pretty, they're a pretty dedicated bunch. But in any case, the URGI kind of falls into that category. Um, you're going to be able to be a super hipster by cloning a rifle before uh, even many units have this particular rifle. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about what the Army has gotten themselves into, how this rifle stacks up to current offerings in the civilian market, and how it stacks up to, say, um, other military rifles that are currently being fielded. And we'll kind of see how it does. So a little bit of history on it, um, uh, Geisley and many other companies were approached by um, the United States Army Special Operations Command, and basically there's a lot of three-gun influence right now in the shooting community, whether that be the over noon, you know, thumb over bore type grip, things like that, thinner hand guards, that all kind of played a role, so that's what they were looking for. So of all those companies, Geisley um, was the one who had their rifle selected. So let's get into it. First thing I want to talk about is going to be the barrel. So the barrel is phenomenal. It is a very nice barrel. The biggest thing with this barrel is it needed to be able to handle M855A1, which is extremely uh, tough on barrels due to the way it was designed and the type of materials used in the tip of the, of the uh, slug itself. Because of that, a certain material was used in the barrel to help it resist wear and that type of thing. Daniel Defense has a cold hammer forged barrel. Um, accuracy out of this barrel is superb. Um, just like any other Daniel Defense barrel, I'm getting around between about 1 to 1.5 MOA, I'm sure it could probably do to 0.75 with good ammo and hand loads and that type of thing. Uh, Daniel Defense barrels are phenomenally made, so there are no problems when it comes to that. Um, kind of going into this barrel, too, is the gas system. So this is kind of the part that was really forward-thinking by um, when they adopted this particular upper. So the gas system, as opposed to being a carbine, which has been the standard go-to in the military forever, is a mid-length. So what that means, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, is that the length of the gas tube is longer than on a carbon length. Because of that, 
This allows for a softer recoil impulse compared to a carbine length gas tube. Also allows for less parts wear since the action is not cycling as harshly. So it was a really good option for them to do that. Now with that mid-length gas system, um, the gas port is a little large. It's at 0 0.076. And if you're familiar with gas port sizes, um, that's getting up there a little bit. And it's not, it's not like crazy, but it is a little bit high. And I understand why they did that. Um, they did that because they wanted to ensure that this thing could push through malfunctions, that could push through debris and that type of thing. By overgassing a system, um, you're going to ensure that it has more gas than is necessary to properly cycle the rifle, as opposed to having it on the bleeding edge of, um, of cycling, like a lot of competition rifles or something like that. I do think that there's probably a better middle ground than what was picked by the United States government, but I understand why they put the gas port at the size that they put it at. It's very similar to the concept that the uh, HK416 uses, which is a violently overgassed system. Now, this is nowhere nearly um, as overgassed as the 416 is. It is much more pleasant to shoot, and you can shoot this thing rapid, no problem compared to the 416. But it should be noted that compared to like a lot of civilian counterparts, let's say to like a BCM mid-length, you're definitely going to notice the increased recoil impulse due to that larger gas port compared to some of those... Um, as you know, what you typically consider like a Gucci civilian rifle or something like that. So that is a note to be made there. But I do think that the mid-length um, is just a massive improvement over a typical M4 Block II rifle that you typically see in the military today. So that was a really awesome idea, and that just uh, that's just going to allow this rifle to last that much longer in the field uh, between maintenance cycles and that type of thing. So really good idea for them to move over to a mid-length. Of course, in the civilian world, the mid-length has been known to be a very um, soft shooting and a very reliable gas system for a long time. The military is usually just a little bit slower to adopt. So when it comes to the U URGI, it is very forward thinking from the military. Uh, if it not, it seems kind of normal to those of us who have been shooting uh, civilian AR-15s for a while. So good on them for the mid-length gas system. Okay, moving up to the front of the rifle right here, we have a flash hider. So they are using a four-prong flash hider. Uh, why four prong as opposed to like a three prong that's typical in the civilian world? There are many conspiracy theories about why the four prong is used as opposed to the three prong. Anything from the fact that the B.E. Myers um, flash hider was kind of uh, later kind of refined into the Surefire four prong or whether the four prong provides better flash suppression. Um, a lot of evidence points to the fact that the three prong actually does do better with flash suppression than the four prong. Nonetheless, the military is slow to move, and because of that, the four-prong is stuck around for a while. Whether it performs better than the three-prong, that's something that I'm not aware of. Now, that being said, it does provide excellent flash suppression at night, especially during the day. You're not going to see anything compared to some muzzle devices out there, which are more like a compensator. This also can host any of the Surefire suppressors, whether it be the SOCOM RC series or something along those lines. So I have a SOCOM RC, so I've run that in this rifle, uh, just as a quick note there. But anyhow, it is running a four prong. Um, until you get a little bit of carbon buildup on the four prong, or, or a three prong for that matter, uh, you're, you are gonna get a nice little ring to it every time you fire that round. Uh, that will go away. I know a lot of people complain about that, but as carbon builds up, it will make that ring go away. There are, of course, better options as far as like drilling asymmetrical holes in the tops, and a couple companies do that, like White Sound Defense. But Surefire's not done that, so we get a ring. I am guessing if they didn't do that to preserve strength, to make sure that these can take a hit and not bend or anything like that, so I understand why. Uh, it just should be a quick note that when you fire in this rifle and it's ringing, it's, uh, it's normal. There you go, you can hear it now. Okay, so we have the barrel the gas system. We talked about the muzzle device. Let's talk about one of the defining features of the URGI, which is the rail. Um, the rail is, 
is cool. So if you're not familiar, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Geyser rails. Uh, they're not the lightest on the market, but there's a purpose to them. So with this particular rail, we have a 13 inch rail. We have a 14.5 inch uh, barrel. Um, this one is pinned, that way it's a legal length for civilians, of course, the military versions would not be pinned. Now with this particular rail from Geisley, this is a Mark 16 rail. So it uses the M-Lock interface. That stands in a stark contrast against a typical military rifle used nowadays, which is a Picatinny, typically a Wrist 2 type handguard. So the Wrist 2 was designed by Daniel Defense and uh, it's about 12 uh, inches long. So it's a little bit shorter than the Geisley Mark 16 rail. The Geisley Mark 16 rail is both longer and weighs less than the current Wrist 2, which is used on M4 platforms. So let's talk about it. So the Mark 16 rail with all hardware on it uh, weighs in at around 14.6 ounces. And it also includes QD mounts on either side of the handguard right here. Now for me, I prefer to run my slings all the way out. So I attach my own little QD mount, but if you don't, they're already built into the handguard at the rear of the handguard right there. Now compare that to the wrist two is around 17.7 ounces. So you save you know, roughly about three, maybe close to four ounces over the older wrist two system. So it is definitely lighter. Now, that being said, it's still going to be heavier, heavier than systems that you're typically seeing in the civilian world, such as the BCM MCMR, which weighs in at around a little over 10 ounces, about 10.2. So why is there such a huge disparity between M-Lock handguards on the civilian market, like the MCMR, which I'm a huge fan of, I think it's a great design, and the Geisley Mark 16. So the best way to describe it is that the Mark 16 is kind of like an MCMR on steroids. What Geisley did and what Yusasak wanted was a handguard that would be among the stiffest handguards on the market. So what that means is that when you have a laser on there, like a PEC-15 or anything like that, it would be rigid, you wouldn't have any type of zero shift. And on top of that, they wanted something that could really take a hit and not bend or anything like that or get damaged when it was in the field. So it needed to be both robust and lighter at the same time. So that is the reason why it's not as light as something like the BCM MCMR. Now, when it comes to the Geisley Mark 16 rail, this thing is not going to rotate due to the way it's installed. Uh, if it's installed properly, it is not going to rotate. Now, despite that, there are still anti-rotation tabs built into the rail itself to ensure that it's bomb proof. And that's kind of a huge thing that Geisley is really into with this particular bill is to make sure that it is bomb proof and that it will not come apart and that it will not in any way um, break due to damage or anything like that. And I think they've done a pretty good job with that. And that also comes down to the gas block as well, which I wanted to mention, but almost forgot with the gas system. Um, the gas block is a low pro um, Geisley gas block on this particular upper, which is a near clone. On a complete clone, it is a Daniel Defense Mark 12 gas block. Now on both of these, they have a bomb proof insulation, which means it is pinned. Uh, I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, I know a lot of companies don't pin their gas blocks. I think it's a really good idea if you're planning on using a rifle in a serious manner. So the Geisley URGI is a pinned gas block, so good on them for that. The upper receiver and the bolt are both mil spec. When it comes to the bulk and bolt carrier group, um, they're mil spec, they're made very well. The bolt is made from Carpenter 158, which is probably among the best materials available when it comes to bolt designs. I know there are some other Gucci materials that offer um, certain properties that are good, but I think Carpenter 158 is a probably among the top materials that can be used for bolts. So they've clearly put a lot of thought into what they're gonna be doing here. Geisley has mentioned that they are planning to doing some type of coating on the bolt carrier group in the future. Um, that's some you know, unicorn magic, and I don't know much about it. It's not released on these particular uppers at this time. Um, when they do release it, I will get my hands on it, and we'll talk about it, and we'll discuss it, and uh, we'll see if it kind of lives up to the height, some type of nano coating or something like that. We'll see. Okay, at the back of the receiver here, we have the airborne charging handle. So the airborne charging handle from Geisley is shorter than their typical charging handles. And the reason for that was, as the name implies, during jumps or something like that, those longer charging handles can get caught up. So that is why they, um, on the URGI, they chose the uh, Geisley airborne charging handle as opposed to the standard Geisley charging handle. Um, with gloves on, it's easy to actuate, anything like that. Now, when it comes to charging handles, I still do prefer the radium charging handles a little bit more over the Geisley, just due to the way they feel when you pull them back. But that being said, there is nothing wrong with the Geisley Airborne, and it is very well designed. And I think it comes down to preference on that. 
and um, everybody's preferences are going to be slightly different. So don't let me saying that I like the rating more mean that you immediately go back and you know not use the Geisley because the Geisley is very well made. In fact, has many properties that ensure that when you're firing it with a suppressor, which is another thing that this was designed for, to ensure that you don't get as much gas blowback in the face. And so the Geisley charging handle has a small lip at the top there to ensure that it blocks a lot of the gas coming back. Now that definitely works. Now due to the fact that the gas system is over gas you're still getting gas in the face but um, without the guys charging handle would certainly be a little bit worse now of course you could make the gas port up front on this urgi a little bit smaller to help deal with that gas a little bit better but then you might run into cycling issues as the gun gets dirty or if you're not running the suppressor which increases the back pressure onto the gas system and that is one of the limitations of a direct impingent system so there's that. And I know people are going to hop in here and be like, the Air 15 is not a true DI system. And I understand where you're coming from. I, I really do get it. I understand. I'm just kind of using layman's terms here. So just bear with me. I'm not Forgotten Weapons. I'm not Ian. So I'm not on that level. So we've talked about a lot of the technical features of the Geisa URGI. So how does it shoot? You know, how does it actually feel compared to like a Block 2 M4 or um, some other military type rifle, like just a regular M4? Um, a lot better, for sure. The URGI is a definite improvement over current M4s that are currently fielded by a lot of units out there. That being said, you compare this to, say, um, some of the newer offerings in the civilian market that have um, some features that are very desirable, uh, that are a little bit softer shooting, um, there is a huge difference there. So it feels a lot better than military ones, but it's still lacking compared to civilian ones. Now I understand why. The system was overgassed to ensure that it would run in really dirty environments. The rail is going to be heavier uh, to withstand a lot more impacts and a lot more violence compared to a civilian counterpart rail that's not designed uh, for the type of, bu of abuse that the Geisey Mark 16 was made to take. So understand that there are going to be trade-offs. Um, don't expect this thing to shred like some three-gun rifle because it wasn't designed to do that. This was designed as a combat upper. It was designed to go through harsh environments and survive them. So understand the purpose of it and kind of figure out if that's going to be what you need. Um, or if you're just cloning, in which case, you know, f you know, the world is your oyster, man. So we've talked about pros. Let's hit cons a little bit here. So cons, um, like I've talked about, overgassed, right? So that is just a problem with the system. But as we talked about, there's a purpose behind it. Um, another one of my qualms that doesn't really have a good explanation, there is scuttlebutt about it, but is the barrel. Specifically, the barrel contour. I love what it's made of. I love that it's cold hammer forged, but the contour is a government profile. Government profiles are interesting. Um, there are better profiles, in my opinion. Why did they use a government profile? It's because what the government wanted. Um, there has been some talk that perhaps uh, in some testing that the government profile barrels performed better than certain other profiles under heavy round counts. I don't know if that information is true. I haven't been able to verify it at this time. That being said, I do think that there are better barrel profiles out there that ensure that you don't have so much weight out front like on a government profile uh, barrel like the one that we have right here. So that is my one main kind of problem when it comes to the URGI. That's not the fault of Geisley or Daniel Defense. It's just the military moving very slowly sometimes when it comes to change. And that's just something that we'll never be able to change. Again, because of that heavier rail and that heavier barrel, this is going to be heavier compared to a lot of civilian counterparts that you might be encountering. So again, you're going to see this thin, small um, M-lock rail, and you're going to be like, oh man, I bet this thing is super light. And it is very light compared to like a typical military upper, but even still compared to a lot of the civilian counterparts, you're going to feel that weight comparatively. Finally, um, probably the biggest problem is expensive. It is an expensive upper. You're paying about 1200 to 1400 depending on the type of model that you buy. Of course, are you getting like a really good upper? Absolutely, you're getting an upper that is hands down ready for combat as soon as you slap it onto your low receiver of your choice. So the URGI is absolutely a fantastically made upper receiver group and it will serve you guys really well. The question is, is do you need it? You know, are you looking to clone a rifle? Then do it, right? You're gonna be a cloner before it was even a cloned rifle. And you know, what accessories you put on it? I don't know, sky's the limit. Guys aren't really even running these yet. So 
that's really cool. If you're like a police officer, SWAT, something like that, the URG is a very, URGI is definitely a really good option. Um, this is a combat rifle through and through, so you'd be hard pressed to find a um, uh, upper receiver that was designed for that as much as the URGI was from Geisley. So figure out what you need. Uh, the biggest thing, guys, is that none of this is going to matter if you don't shoot. So get out there and actually shoot. Guys, the big people I recommend for training are Cogworks, Bear Solutions, Haley Strategic, Esoteric. Don't forget Darcy at the Direct Action Resource Center. All great guys. Get in there. Get that training. Get good at shooting. That's what matters, guys. Before we finish, I know you're going to ask, oh, what is my current setup on this particular rifle? You know, what is XYZ? So let's talk about it from uh, front to back. So first off, uh, light. I am using a Arasaka 600 series light. I think that they're very well made. They're not quite as bright as a Surefire. They have a little less battery life, but they're very well made. I'm a huge fan of them. Uh, front sight, I am using a Knight's Armament front sight. No big deal. I have it turned backwards. That way I can have my pec a little bit further forward. Um, that's just something I choose to do. We have PEC-15 right here, full power. Behind that, we have a Surefire ST-07, if I'm not mistaken, which is just a uh, momentary pressure pad. Um, so that works pretty well. Um, on the rail itself, I have BCM rail panels for the M-Lock, and they help me kind of grip the rifle when I'm shooting it. Pew, pew. Um, up front right here, I have a BCM QD mount for my sling. The sling is a Ferro Concepts Slingster, in Multicam Arid, which is a super sexy camo. Moving back from there, I have a EOTech EXPS 3-0, one of my favorite optics. I use it all the time. EOTech still rock. At the very back, I have a Knight's Armament Lollipop rear sight, and then I have a B5 Systems Sop Mod Enhanced Stock. So that is the upper. Now in the lower, I have a Radian ADAC lower. It's an Amity Dextrous lower. I'm a huge fan of it, obviously. Uh, running a Geisley SSP trigger. We'll talk about triggers soon, but it is a wonderful trigger. So that is what I'm running there. I understand that this is not clone correct, because a typical clone correct rifle would have a Colt lower with some type of Gazi trigger. And I don't have a Colt lower, I have a Radian lower with some type of Gazi trigger. So I understand that, but I just love Gazi. I mean, I just love Radian lower, so we're just going to run with it. But that is my setup on this particular rifle. There you have it. appreciate you guys watching, and I've got nothing else for you. Okay, last thing I have for you guys is take the time to uh, take time for yourself. That's my dad advice for today. And what I mean by that is a lot of people, when they're going through school or work or something like that, you can get kind of focused. And sometimes work and school isn't very nice to you. Sometimes you fail a test or you do bad at work and you get punished and that makes you want to work harder and that's very good. But sometimes you can get uh, down on yourself. I know that me in particular, I'm very hard on myself when something goes wrong. And, uh, you know, I don't want to, I guess, allow myself to, uh, to relax when something bad happens because I'm like, okay, I need to work through it. I need to work through this. And that's good. You definitely need to, do need to do that. But for your mental health, um, it is important that you guys take some time to yourself and you relax um, in whatever way best works for you, whether that be running or whether that be uh, shooting or whether it be skydiving or, or something or even playing video games or doing something. The point is take that time for yourself and relax. Don't forget to treat yourself. That's very important for your mental health. And if you guys have watched to this point, um, where do I buy a lot of my stuff? So again, a lot of stuff is given to me. I never lie about that to you guys. But if I do have to buy things, I typically go through a subscription service because I buy so many items. So I use Big Daddy Unlimited. Okay, big thing with Big Daddy Unlimited, you're paying like 10 bucks a month and you're getting access to ammunition, you know, uh, optics, that type of stuff, and rifles uh, for a steeply discounted price. Of course, that's not going to work for you if you're not buying those products. So again, if you're using the subscription service, make sure you're buying stuff. If you're not buying, you know, more than once a year, you're probably not going to save the money based on the subscription per year. But if you're buying, a, you know, an item every month or every other month, something like that, you're definitely going to save the money. Uh, famously, they had Trigger Guard RMRs for like 230 something dollars, like something ridiculous. So Big Daddy Unlimited is not like a scam, even though it has a really creepy name. So if you want to get in there, I have a link right down below and check that out. I do use it. I do support it. Uh, again, not a scam. So I want you guys to name your favorite romantic comedy. Mine is hands down... La La Land, which I guess is a musical, but it's going to count. Um, 
If you can justify it, you can put it in the, <laughs> the comments section. Oh my God, do, do whatever you guys want. I'm done.